And we are underway from NRG Stadium in Houston. Desmond King to return it from his end zone. And no chance to get away as they'll get him down at about the 17-yard line. So out come the Texans for their opening drive. And they will be let out by their second-year quarterback. His ability to adjust on the fly is almost unmatched in the game right now because it leads to a couple of snaps per game where you just sit back and ask yourself, how did he pull that off? Opponents can practice and prepare each and every week all they want, but this guy, he is hard to corral. A pretty good results here on the first down run as he takes this forward for about six. That's a really nice job by them picking up the run blitz and detecting it and blocking it and turning it into a nice run. And a lot of times you think if you blitz a running play, you're going to smother it. But a lot of the blitzers, they come in a little bit high. They don't have great leverage, and they're easily blocked and turned to the side. The second down throw now from Stroud. Got his man, Dell. Six yards the pick up, and that's a first down. I think that's a big pickup for a first down because when you run a drag route against zone, you're sometimes asking for trouble because you might run into a defender. Yeah, well, there they ran into a first down, executed it to perfection. Delson in motion. He'll get it here on the jet sweep. Oh, and this one it may need to go back to the drawing board. He's going to be swallowed up right away. That's the linebacker, Matt Milano, getting up and stopping him for a loss. That's the danger, Charles, of running plays like this for your wide receiver. They can hit big or they can be duds. Yeah, you're exactly right about that because if they're forced to try and go around defenders behind the line of scrimmage, sometimes you can give yardage in order to gain it. But in this case, they gave yardage and didn't get it back. Let's not quibble about the gain there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take-what-you-can-guess situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives them a much better opportunity to convert on third down. This now a third and four. Stroud working out of the gun. And they take him down. The Bills get to him. That's Matt Milano firing in from his linebacker position. It always helps for a visiting team to come in and set the tone on defense. In fact, when we talked with them prior to the game, they said they wanted this home crowd to feel like they had to hide their valuables when they were in town. <laughs> well, the home crowd quiet now early. See if their offense can take over and get some points on the board. On is the punter Townsend as he gets this one away. It's a 43-yard punt, a return of five, and the Bills will take over the football with a first and ten. Well, the Buffalo offense coming out, and it is Josh Allen who is at the helm. I remember when he came out of Wyoming, the big question mark, could he be accurate enough to be a star in the NFL? I think it's safe to say he's put all of us in our place and put those doubts to rest. He can roll out and run it. He can bomb it over your heads. Everything in between he is an absolute nightmare for defenses to try and prepare for. And when he's on, he's an MVP caliber player each and every time he takes the field. Motion man is Shakir. Allen now on first down. Got it complete to Khalil Shakir. And he gets this to the 35. Good for a gain of five. Ball on the 35. Here comes second and five. Allen going to throw. Under a heavy rush, and down he goes. They get to him for a loss of four, and it brings up third down on the sand. And this is what you've got to do against a quarterback like him. You've got to keep him in the pocket and not let him get to the perimeter, because once he gets outside, that's where he can really hurt you. Throwing his Allen on third. Oh, and that is incomplete. Man coverage is certainly a staple of their defense as built for plays like that, forcing that incompletion. So now on fourth down, Sam Martin on to punt for Buffalo. Desmond King deep for Houston. That's taken on the 25. 
It'll be a 41-yard punt. Give them five on the return. And the Texans will take over with a first and 10. So now we get set to see Houston for their second drive of the ball game. The last series for them, a little disappointing, forced to punt. And now they'll try to do better here and come away with some points as they begin this drive, first and 10. So first and 10 now from the 30. Here's Joe Mixon as they start on the ground. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Defensively, we always know that he is tough in run support, and I think the way that he gets there is he understands what an offense is going to do before the ball's even snapped. A great job of scouting prior to the game, then reading, reacting, and taking the right path to the ball carrier. Back to Mixon on second down. And he'll scratch out only about a yard up to the 32. I know the speed is the hallmark of today's NFL game, but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge. Third and eight. Back to throw. Here's Stroud. And Diggs has it. And he's going to come up a few yards short of the first. They get him to the ground at the 37. It'll go down as a gain of six. And that'll bring up fourth down. A short gain that doesn't get him the first down brings up a fourth down situation. Really nice job defensively. They knew where the sticks were. They got the stop before it. Here's Tommy Townsend on to punt. 46 on his first kick. This one in that neighborhood as well. Fair catch called for in May, but now we'll have to see about the penalty. Personal foul. Roughing the kicker. Defense. Hey, we do to do what we do. So not just running into the punter, but roughing the punter. And I'm struggling with this one. You know, you're watching it, partner. Is it more the first rather than the latter? This is a tough one. Almost feels like he felt like he had to call it on that play. A lack of discipline defensively on fourth down, and now that leads to a first and ten. Play action. Stroud now. He finds his man complete. That's Beck. And he's corralled, but not before getting it inside the 35. Another nice gain, 13 yards that time, and another first down. Good sure hands there from a guy not accustomed to catching a whole lot of passes. But how about the way he was able to pull that one in and pick up good yardage? Stroud sets up the play action. Man open downfield is Diggs. He's got it. It's a gain of 34. When teams practice their plays during the week, they're hoping that it's going to pay off on game day. So it sure has to feel good for them when they hit them during a game. And they hit that one there for big yardage. They need about the length of the football here on first and goal. Pierce. He is going nowhere in a hurry as he is going to lose yardage here in a big way. That's going to go as a loss of four, and it'll be second down. The short field shrinks even more with the type of bodies they brought in on that play. Those extra tight ends, they weren't able to secure their blocks, and that one ended up going backwards. From back at the four, here's second and goal. Mixon will take this one in for a Texans touchdown. That almost looked too easy, and I think thanks goes to the offensive line for making it look easy. Yeah, I agree with you totally on that one. I'm not sure how much everyone understands the preparations that go into a game for an offensive line because there's a reason that running backs and quarterbacks give them big gifts at the end of the season after a big year. The consistency and the continuity it takes to know each other and execute their blocks is pretty impressive. Fairbairn good with the extra point, and it's now a 7-0 game. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbairn now to kick it away. Isabella now from his end zone. 
And only able to get this to the 19, so probably should have opted for the touchback. So here come the Bills out for their second drive. And the last drive, the first drive for them, not very good. Three and out. What do they go to here? Well, you don't look down at your play sheet and say, this is what the problem is. And let's find out who my playmakers are. Get the ball in their hands, and maybe the offense will move a little bit Sometimes better. Sometimes it's more important to get it to the right people rather than dialing up the right number. Exactly. Or the, the right play, yeah. That too. <laughs> Stopped at the 24-yard line after a gain of five. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here, and if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal, get a couple of first downs, run some plays, run some clock, allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath, settle down, and relax a little bit after they just gave up a score. Now a first carry for the brother of Dalvin. It's James Cook, and he's going to have a Bills first down as he's got this up to the 35-yard line. Although his reputation as a speedy runner precedes him, it's always fun to watch him work. It is eye-opening, isn't it? Because when you see him get the ball and just go, in addition to that speed, it helps out his blockers. They don't have to hold blocks for long because he's just going to speed right past them. After one, seven nothing on EA Sports. The Bills with the football as we start quarter number two. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. To throw, it's Allen. This one complete to Curtis Samuel. And yeah, this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. From the 44-yard line, here's second and a yard. Up the middle, it's Cook. Gets around him, and he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. A big chunk on the ground there, 27 yards. I think they like this drive a little bit better there, partner. Running game helping out, picking up some of the slack. Because remember, the last drive, they went three and out. So a first and 10 now in Houston territory as they've got it to the 28-yard line. Allen. And his throw is incomplete. He didn't just deny a big throw there. He broke that one up in the red zone. An excellent play, one that may help save points on the board when this drive is over. Here's second and 10. Allen now looks to throw. Shakir holds it in. And he's going to be taken down with another first down as the stop's made at the Texan 16. 12 yards there as they move the chains. As the field starts to get condensed, the defense likes that a lot because now you don't have as much space to cover, but a well-run corner route there. So the ball down to the 16 here for first and 10. This taken in by Kincaid. So he stopped for no gain, and it'll be second down. Well, that was a simple throw and catch, but even with that completion, zero yards gained, so they're behind schedule on down and distance. I think they were hoping to get it to him. He could make a man or two miss, but that window closed quickly. Two minutes gone by, second quarter. On second down, Cook. And they get to him quickly here as he stopped right around the 13. He'll get only three there, so it leaves him with a third and seven ahead. Some of the most unselfish players on any football team, defensive tackles, because we ask them to just eat up blocks and allow other people to make tackles. But when he can make a play himself, as we just saw there, that's a big day. Throwing now is Allen. 
Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And the Bills are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. Well, they've had a great, impressive drive going here, and that pickup ensures the drive continues. And not only do you continue the drive, which is demoralizing for the guys on the defense side of the ball right now, but you make your own defense happy. They're able to get a little more rest over on the sidelines while this one continues downfield. Cook will take this over the line. Touchdown, Buffalo. And he was excellent on that drive. He deserved to be the one to get across the chalk. Oh, I agree with you totally. A workhorse on the drive. And how about that last decisive run to punch it in? And Tyler Bass on for the extra point attempt. It's up and good, and we're tied at seven here in quarter number two. So I'll leave it at seven now as they kick it away. Taken at the goal line. And beyond the 20, but not by much. In fact, just a yard pass there to the 21. And now out comes Houston. So both of these teams, Charles, coming off touchdowns now, but this offense, they just had to stand on the sideline, watch their opponent author a really impressive drive to reach the end zone. Yeah, and I think you're not telling yourself the truth if you don't think there's some one-upsmanship going on right now because they just had their touchdown answered by a drive of double-digit plays that also found the end zone. Now they want to do something even more impressive to answer that one. Stroud now on first and 10. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Schultz. The drive starting play, a good one. Give him 19. For a tight end, he's got good straight line speed. And on that route, he's often the guy that gets overlooked. Nice job there finding him in stride for really good yardage. From up near the 40 now after the big play to start, here's another first and 10. Mixing up the middle. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. The tackle made by Nicholas Morrow. The running lanes have definitely not been there for him here in the first half, and I don't think it's all been his fault. His offensive line hasn't given him much space. A loss results there. Now a second and 10. Stroud looking to throw. He'll get this into the hands of Nico Collins. And he's got a first down as the tackle made at the Bills' 44-yard line. Texans passing game in rhythm right now, picking up another first. And that's a more than acceptable read right there because it's zone coverage, so timing is everything. This time he waits for his man to come open, puts it right on him, and they pick up a first down. So first and 10 now in Buffalo territory at the 44-yard line. Stroud will run the option left. And maybe the wrong read there as he's going to go down immediately. Two yards the loss, second and 12. But sometimes that option can get bogged down before the gears really even get into motion. And I think that's what we saw there. And I think what he saw, he saw a defensive end right in his face because he looked up and he was right there. Didn't even have a chance to get going. Stroud now on second down to mix it on the check down. Call it a gain of three on the play. And that's going to set up a tough third and nine. Well, offensively, that's the mismatch that you want. You want to force a linebacker to try and cover your back out of the backfield, out in some open space. But linebackers nowadays, they run like backs, and they take a lot of pride in covering. What a nice play he made there in the open field. Now a third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. Problems on third down so far in this first half. Relatively small sample size, but they're now 0 for 3. And the average in the league, somewhere around 40% on third down for offenses. So what's the answer to this? Either convert them or don't get to third down in the first place. Get your big chunks of yards on first and second down. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. And they'll play keep away from the returner as this one will be marked out of bounds at the 13-yard line. Pretty good spot. 
That hurts. If it was running into the kicker, wouldn't be a first down. Roughing, it is a first. And just think about the differences between the two. Running into the kicker almost feels inadvertent, just a small tap, so to speak. But when you rough him, usually bodies are hitting the ground and flying all different places. And the difference is five yards or 15. And in this case, that's a big play. A lack of discipline defensively on fourth down, and now that leads to a first and ten. Stroud. Over the middle, he gets it to Collins. And they'll work it inside the 15-yard line before it's all said and done. That's another gain of 15 on back-to-back -back plays. Well, that certainly has to feel good. It's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, nice first down. Drive keeps moving. Stroud will look to throw once more. And his throw is going to be incomplete. I'm really liking what I'm seeing from this defense because their coverage has been playing at a shutdown level so far, even backed up late. They're forcing incompletions and fighting to keep them out of the end zone as the first half winds down. Second and ten. Inside handoff to Mixon. And power running here down to the six-yard line. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. But this play sequence was really kind of called in reverse. Incomplete pass on first and ten. Nice run on second and 10 when probably everyone was expecting them to throw the football. Now, if you're the defense, what are they going to do on third down? You're a little off balance. Third and three. Here's Stroud. And that's going to be incomplete. The coverage too good there. The contact popped the ball free, and it's fourth down. And I think they'd be well served to take that type of a physical approach against him the rest of the game. He's had his way so far, but on that last one, that worked quite well for the defense. The kick by Fairbairn is good, and they take the lead here now at 10-7. So they're able to end that drive with three points in this one possession ball game. Fairbairn now following the made field goal. He'll send this one away. Isabella not going to risk a return here, and they'll start at the 25. James Cook running back out now. And he had a short touchdown run last series. Four carries, good yardage as well. Pretty good all around, really, Charles. It was, because think of the drive that created all of that, right? The ability to carry the football, the ability to see holes that were created for him, even able to pat the wide receivers on the back and say, thanks, guys, for the help, and finishes it off with that short touchdown run. I, I can't wait to see what they do in the next drive and the next series. I want to see how the defense adjusts. And that is caught on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. The throw took him a little too far. It's second down. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. Now Allen. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Well, they approached this drive with a lot of confidence after the last one ended up as a touchdown. But incompletions on their first two throws has them huddling up and trying to figure out a big play here on third down to get their momentum going again. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has them staring at a third and ten. Now a give running right. It's Cook. And he will lose yardage and be backed up to the 24. Now the Texans will burn the first of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. On fourth down, here's Sam Martin on to kick it away. 44 on his first punt, and this is a good kick as well. It's a return of four following a 42-yard punt. And the Texans will take over. Houston set to take over. 
Their drive last time, it stalled out. They were forced to take the short field goal. And the key phrase, you nailed it. Forced to, because you know coaches look at these short field goals as a last resort, right? To them, that's not how drives are supposed to end. You're supposed to put six on the board. That's a consolation prize, like going to the county fair. You don't get the big stuffed animal on that one, do you? No, you don't go top shelf. Stephon Diggs! Well, he is out of bounds, but not before he's inside the 30. Boy, he ran free there after the catch as that winds up going for 38. Well, he looked his way quite a bit in this first half, and with good reason. You can see it there. He is such a handful defensively, just too hard to keep him under wraps. He delivers a big play here for this offense. So now then, the big play has him all the way inside the 30 now, first and 10. Throwing now is Stroud. He finds his target. It's Schultz. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. Such a tough position to defend near the line, even when you add a second defender. But the big man shrugged off the extra body and made the play call a success. Creeping up on a minute to play in this first half. Now Stroud. That's going to be caught at the 10-yard line. And the Texans are going to have a first and goal as the tackle is made at about the five. This offense can certainly move quickly when they want to. Three plays, three pass completions, in the blink of an eye, they've got a first and goal. Almost felt like a lightning bolt hit in this game, didn't it, for them to get downfield that quickly? And now first and goal, expect them attack right here on this play. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. I see the surprise in your face there, partner. That is a rare incompletion from him. He's been on point this entire game. He has percentage completion-wise way up. Not that time. On second and goal, one man stands in the backfield, and that's Mixon. Here goes Stroud again. That one thrown away from the pocket. And the officials kind of looking at each other, but they'll say there was a receiver in the area, so no penalty, just an incomplete pass. A big play forthcoming. Here's third and goal. Stroud to throw it. And that is caught. Touchdown, Texans. Nico Collins as the first half is winding down. And the Texans will extend their lead here just before halftime. Well, that's just how they drew it up, CD. His first read was there, got it to him quickly, and into the end zone. Absolutely excellent execution by all involved. And the coordinator, got to give him credit, found the perfect play call. Quarterback let it fly as soon as the target came free. And his guy made a nice catch. Just how you draw it up in practice and then execute it in the game. So not much time to speak of remaining in this first half as the kick's away. And they will wrangle it down a couple yards shy of the 30. The Bills come to the line to start their next drive. And you wonder if with Allen's arm, they might just take their chances by dialing up a long one. And this offense going to elect to burn a timeout with five seconds remaining in quarter number two. And you see the clock almost empty, so this is likely the last play in the second quarter. A final shot before half for Allen. This to the tight end, Kincaid. And he gets this up across the 35 before he's out of bounds. They'll wind up getting seven on the play, and that will bring up third and one. Now, Allen. 
one to throw. A final shot before break. Pass to the sideline and pulled in. And he'll be out of bounds after getting this one across the 40. Apologies to coach. Cut him short. We'll talk to him post game. We got business to get down to. Third quarter action ready to go. And we welcome you back live now inside the booth alongside Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon, set and ready to rock for the third quarter. A 10-point game, 17-7 to score as we get back to it on EA Sports. And this will be a touchback, no return from Isabella. Out come the Bills now as they'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. Charles, it'll be interesting to see what adjustments this offense made in the locker room. Haven't really been able to get anything going offensively, virtually nothing in the ground attack either. So certainly something has to change here in quarter three. And I'm pretty sure their friends from the defensive side of the ball told them exactly that because those guys, the stop troops, they've been playing pretty well and they've kept them around in this game. Now they've got some time. The running game struggled in the first half. Opposition knows how to focus on defending the pass here. They've got to re-energize that ground game and maybe open things up for a comeback here in this half. Second and six, just inside the 30. Allen going to throw. Completes to Shakir once again. Fifth catch of the afternoon, and that gives him a first down. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of until they stop him, why not go back to it? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection. Throwing on first down is Allen. And a quick throw here. That's complete. And a six-yard gain gets him right around the 43. Nothing fancy on first down, but a very consistent type of a play. Hit that slant. A lot of people call it an extension of the running game, and it can be if that pass is completed because you hit a guy on the run like that, you often can go for big yardage. Sets him up nicely for second down, staying ahead of schedule. And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. We saw this a lot in the first half, and it continues. These receivers just not able to get much separation. So that means they have to win the 50-50 balls. They've got to go up with the defender and find a way to start coming down with them. And this time, contact and another incomplete pass. Now Allen again. Oh, he tried to fit it in on the slant, and it's intercepted. And a huge return as he'll take this one all the way down inside the 30-yard line. As they started that drive, I think they looked at the scoreboard and said, this is a manageable deficit, guys, but let's go ahead and start cutting it down right here. Instead, an interception happened, so a two-possession game might become three. So as we get going here in the second half, this could rapidly reach the point where there isn't enough time left for a comeback if their defense doesn't bail them out. Here's the Texans offense now, readying for their first possession of the second half. And they'll have good field position here following the interception and a chance to build on their lead as they start with a first and ten. Mixon with a first down carry. And he's in. Touchdown, Houston. Joe Mixon, his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Texans are able to strike quickly to add on to their lead. Always important to get the first score of the second half. Now you start to pull away a little bit and get some breathing room going. And now we find out about the fortitude of the group that's behind because they were counting on getting into the game a little bit more, right? Maybe they get the first score. That doesn't happen. It looks almost insurmountable, but it's not. Let's see how hard they play the rest of the game. Extra point by Fairbairn, up and good. And that'll make this a three-score game now. The lead moves to 17. 
So after the touchdown, here's Fairbairn now to kick it away. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped at the 23-yard line. The Bills offense back out onto the field. I kind of feel like they've reached a do-or-die point in this game, Charles. If they're going to try to pull off an impressive comeback, it has to start right here, right now. Yeah, now they've got a final chance to get out of this situation, but they also understand they've got to move the ball and move it fast. In addition, they need to save as much time so they can get two more possessions. Here's Cook as they begin on the ground. And he'll be corralled right around the 34. 56 yards now on the ground on just seven carries. The way the game has changed a little bit is that defensive goals have changed in a big way. Nowadays, it's not so much stopping certain yardage or whatever, but it's not giving up big, explosive plays. Anything over 10 yards, you're trying to hold teams below that. When they get one against you, as we just saw there, Boy, that really hurts them. It puts them back on their heels a little bit. It makes them a little bit less confident. Now here's a pass on first down that's knocked away and incomplete. That was well played, but that was also an example of a corner who understands his coverage, realized he had support behind him, and could be a little more aggressive in the shorter zone, and did exactly that, knocking that pass away. Now Allen throwing on second down. And he comes back with one complete. And he'll be tackled right on the chalk of the 45. 11 yards and a Buffalo first down. Well, we talk all the time about playing situational football. And right now, I think the scoreboard is dictating what they need to do. Where they are in this game, they've got to push the ball downfield, take their shots, try and get big chunks of yardage in a short amount of time. That was a nice play there. He's across midfield and bulldozing his way through and down to the 27-yard line. The catch and run pays off for 29 yards. It's taken a while for this offense to get going. A little creaky at the start, but they're oiled up now. A nice throw there, and they're really putting together a good drive. So a first and 10 now in Houston territory at the 27. Cook up the gut. They get him to the ground right on the cusp of the red zone after a pickup of five or six. That play wasn't quite as big as the play that preceded it, but still, gotta like the way they're moving the football, partner. Absolutely, pretty good room to run on that last play. Yeah, they didn't get a first down, but still, you'll take runs like that each and every time, won't you? From the 20, here's second and four. Again, it's Cook. And he'll be taken down at the 20 after a gain of just one. Not too many offenses want to turn down long drives, but when you're down what they are, they've got to pay it off with some points. Seventh play of the drive now as they come up on a third and three. Has his man, it's Shakir. And he is going to have a Bills first down, I do believe. Yes, he's got it by about a yard there on third and three. But with the score where it is, you're not thinking field goals right now. You need touchdowns. So that was a much-needed conversion there on third down. So the ball down to the 16 here for first and 10. Now Allen. Yeah, that went too far in front. He couldn't reel it in. It's incomplete. The throwing windows get a lot tighter near the end zone, don't they? And here's the thing. You already probably have three points in your hip pocket. You force a throw here and give up an interception, you come away with nothing. Especially tough in the middle third of the field where he threw that one. On play action, Allen. Oh, he rifles one, and that's going to be intercepted. Desmond King picks it, and the Texans are going to have it here at their own 15. Well, it certainly feels like this defensive group has figured this guy out to the tune of a big lead in this one. And you know that he's frustrated with how this game has gone, and now with back-to-back -back interceptions, he's got to find a way to get out of his own head and start making better plays. And the football going back over now to the Houston Texans. 
This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out looking to repeat that in Charles' defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. On first down, here's Stroud. Over the middle, complete. It's Collins. That's good, the completion there for seven yards, and it's second down. He decided to run a hitch route. It really helps to have a guy who can turn it loose, and boy, he rifled one in there on that one. Not much run after catch, but it worked really well. From the 22 now, here's second and three. Running left, it's Mixon. Down the numbers, there he goes. And he will finally be tracked down at the Bills' 31-yard line. 94 yards for him on the ground now as he has been terrific here this afternoon. The ultimate speedster showing that speed at this, in front of this home crowd. They love that. Made me stand up on that run because right now all I want to do is wave to the crowd. More noise, more noise. You got to reward him for that one. A big-time monster run. So the big play changes the complexion of things. Here's first and 10 just outside the 30. Once again, they run with Mixon. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. Another big gainer that time. This one goes for 19 yards. Yeah, another good run there. He's been such a big part of their success here this afternoon. And that last carry, it puts him over 100 yards now for the day. From down at the 12, it's first and 10. Stroud sets up the play action. This goes out wide for Mixon, and he'll get it here to the 10-yard line. Only able to gain a couple there, and it'll be second down. All defense is worried that whenever anyone catches the ball and has a head of steam come out of the backfield, it could turn into a big play with missed tackles or he runs through people. But they were right there waiting, and they stopped him for a minimal gain. On second down, here's Mixon. And he'll take this one in for a Texans touchdown. Joe Mixon, a 10-yard touchdown run. And the Texans will add on to their lead here in the final minute of the third. Well, this offensive line has really stepped up to the challenge here because those Mastodons, they've been sensational clearing holes all game long. And this is great work down here near the goal line to give their back the space he needs to work his way into the end zone. Fairbairn good with the extra point, and the lead is now 24. The drive summary that time, five plays, and it all culminated in the touchdown run coming from Joe Mixon. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbairn now to kick it away. And a good effort on the return there. Gets him across the 30, up to the 33. Here's the Buffalo offense now as they get set to take over here. They're sort of seeing themselves spiral out of control. Let's see if they can get things back on track. And this is where the coach is walking that line of being calm and really being firm with his team. I had one tell me once, you know, when we were having a tough patch, this too shall pass, this too shall pass, and then finally we kept having a rough patch. He said, but you've got to do something <laughs> Heads up. to make it pass, and that's what they have to do. They've got to get some control back, get themselves reasserted, and calm things down. See if they can get calm and reassert themselves here. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. It's been clear in this matchup which side has been the more physical one. It's been this defense. And here's another example on that last play. Second and 10. Thanks for tagging along with us here from Houston, Texas. Here's Allen to throw it. 
This throw incomplete, nearly picked off. And with his pedigree, he doesn't drop many of those. But third down coming up. Well, he's smart enough to avoid the taunting rule, but I'll guarantee he quietly has told them, you might want to stop coming after me downfield because I just broke up another pass and took away a big shot that you were trying to succeed with. Throwing his Allen on third. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. And he'll get this to the 40, but that's still going to be a few yards short of the first down. So the completion good for seven there. And that's going to make it fourth down. Before they can get the punt away, whistles as we've come to the end of the third quarter of action. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. Running for it. Here's Cook. And he won't get there. They stop him a few yards short of the line to gain. No dice for Sean McDermott and the offense. And the Texans take over an excellent field position. And defensively, they were ready for that. A full-on blitz on fourth down, and they stop him short of the marker. Oh, and someone's got to feel really good about that, and that's the defensive coordinator. He dialed up a great run blitz defense and they hit it just right. Stack that thing up. They're going to feel awesome going to the bench after that big play. Out of the shotgun, they run with Mixon. And this defense not ready for that one as he'll take this down inside the 25. 140 yards rushing for him now as he has been tremendous all day long. Well, that's a carry they have to be satisfied with. And throughout this game, they've been satisfied with what he's given them. Whenever they've needed a big run, a first down, he's the guy they've turned to. And it doesn't matter what the defense thinks. They feel like they've got the confidence to keep handing it to him and keep picking up good yardage. That's going to be caught. And out of bounds all the way down at the three. A good pick up there, 21 yards. The passing game continues to be their friend, even with a stable lead here in the fourth, Charles. They're going back to that well. Yeah, with their overall philosophy, you know that they trust their quarterback. He's been able to throw it well. They continue to throw these safe passes. Who can blame them? They'll give it to Mixon, and he's in. Touchdown, Houston. Joe Mixon. A three-yard touchdown run. And the Texans have sewn this one up as they add to their lead here in the fourth. Well, when coaches come into a game preaching total team effort, CD, I think this is the type of ball game that they're dreaming of. It was pretty apparent early on that they were clicking in all three phases. It's, it's been fun to watch. Yeah, sometimes in the NFL, you end up with matchups like we've been watching here. And when you go back through the early drives, you can just see that one squad was on a different level in this game. Safe to say, we have been disappointed in watching their execution throughout this contest. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbairn now to kick it away. This fielded right at the goal line. And he'll take it a yard or so past the 20, call it the 21. Back onto the field now comes the Bills offense. Charles, we know that this offense is aggressive. We saw that last drive. They went for it on fourth down, didn't get it. Then they give up the touchdown. So now you feel like they really need to respond here. They certainly do, but let's face it. Sometimes when you take that risk, you understand if you fail, a little more onus goes back on your ball club to try and pick themselves back up. Allen now on first down. Oh, he dropped it. And that's pretty indicative of the way this one's gone. They lead big, and a major part of that has been how they've taken their play to a whole new level this second half. 
No points allowed since the break. And you can add another incompletion to the total number that they forced in this runaway contest. Allen looks to throw on second down. Open man Hamler, that's complete. And he'll get this up past the 25 before he's out of bounds. Five yards, now it's third and five. They'll need five on this play to move the sticks. Allen off the play fake. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he is going to have a Bills first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Well, this game was decided a while ago, and that completion there, it's going to artificially inflate his passing numbers. So right now, the only one really applauding probably his agent as he thinks about angling for a new contract. Here's Allen on first and ten. He'll drop this down to Johnson underneath. And they'll get to him after a gain of seven to the 47. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. You're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. Allen to throw once more. And he drops it incomplete. And their struggles continue here. And that's another play that's painted the picture of this game overall. It's been a blowout. It's been continually fueled by big turnovers and stops for one side and an inability to advance the ball from the other. The Bills on third down. They're at 50%, four for eight. This time it's third and three. Allen. That is caught. And he's going to be taken down with another first down as the stops made at the Texans 35. 12 yards on third down as the drive rolls on. Well, this game is certainly pretty well over. They can go ahead and mark it in the win column, but as a defense, they don't want to get so soft now that everybody just throws the ball all over the place against them, gets big yardage, and puts points on the board. They have pride, too, on that side of the ball. First down, here's the run with Cook. And not a lot of daylight, not really any daylight inside as he's going to be stopped right at the line of scrimmage. Brings up second down. Nice job there defensively to clamp down because really they've been on their heels this drive. Agreed, and they really needed that one for confidence, just to feel a little bit better. But I don't know if I would be daunted by them stopping me on one run. This drive has gone pretty well. I could come right back at them. And he's going to be taken down with another first down as the stops made at the Texans 23. Give him 12 yards on that one. It earns him a fresh set of downs. On first down, Allen. That's Samuel, caught left side. And he's gonna get a solid gain of nine before being brought down, second and right at a yard. Let's go. Just need a yard here, second and one. Back to the ground, Cook. And he's brought down just outside of the 10 at the 11. Four yards the pick up, first down. Sometimes I get almost mesmerized watching these runners who have great vision. You know, those eyes that carry their feet to open spaces, make people miss. I just love watching those guys go to work. Now a first and 10 at the 11. To throw, it's Allen. And that one drops down, incomplete. Good coverage there, forced the ball free, and it's second down. He did a fine job there of not hitting him before the ball arrived, and I've got to tell you, you can often mistime that play because of the angles of approach. When you're going to get him, sometimes you panic as well and think, I've got to be there right now. Instead, in this case, timed it perfectly and knocked it free. And he'll be brought down here at the three-yard line. He turned that into a nice game. Gets him eight yards closer for third down. Well, it certainly appears to me that the defensive guys are starting to look a little bit tired. 
Well, he still has some fresh legs. Not the biggest gain we've seen on a scramble, but still some positive yardage on a play that initially looked like a sure win for the defense. Now on third and two, they're going to elect to throw with Allen. And this is caught. Well, they get one back, picking up the late touchdown here, but still down big. On those slants, everything happens so quickly. What makes it work? The timing between the passer and the receiver. In this case, a slant route. Ordinarily, it's probably about three steps before you go on the slant. In this amount of time, I think it was a two-step deal. Boom, put his foot in the ground and got inside for the pass. Got inside for the pass, got inside for the catch and the score. Extra point by Bass, up and good. And the lead is down to 24. So still lots of work left to do, but here comes the onside kick. And the effort snuffed out. The Texans' hands team recovers. Uh, fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And I know we brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it, they do actually recover the ball, which is what we saw here. I just wonder if that number is much more of a anecdotal type of a number. Kind of like when the coaches tell us, well, when you score on special teams, 93% <laughs> of the time you win the game. I'm still waiting to see that number is empirical. Mixon will try the right side down inside the 40. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. And, and I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. Back to Mixon on second down. And for one of the few times here today, this run's not going to go anywhere. The line to gain is the 33 on third down. Back to throw, here's Stroud. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And he is going to have a Texans first down as they're able to get the third down. Play. Made a nice catch and picked up the first down. That's what impresses me about him. When he's called upon, usually gets it done. A handoff to Mixon. They're going to snuff this play out behind the line. We have not seen that much today. That was Terrell Bernard navigating his way to the backfield and dropping him for a loss. On this day, the ground has been his, but at least on that individual play, we just saw the defense finally with a win. Yeah, they finally got one, and that's a win for them, but all game long. He's seen the holes, and they've been huge for him. Kind of like a baseball hitter in the zone. The ball seems bigger, and he's just whacking it. These guys, they've got it going today. So where'd all that running room that he had in the first half go? Because it looks like it's drying up a little bit here. Someone made some adjustments, it appears, at least on this drive. Well, this was a really nice display, Charles, of complimentary football, especially how much they were humming in the second half to pull away and get the victory. Really a complete performance. And so much fun when you're able to have everyone contribute, both sides of the ball. You go back in the locker room and you just savor it, right? Because that's what football is all about, a true team game, and they got it done in this one. That'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, find us on Twitter at EA Madden NFL.
It's a win for the Texans as we say so long from Houston.